John and Mary married in October 1956. In September 57, their first child was born, Carol. A year later, Marie. In 1959, another girl, Rosalind. In 1960, Mary lost a child. Then in 61, Janet was born. In 1962, Edith. 18 months later, Lorraine. Then in 65, their first boy, Martin. In 1966, Stephen. Early in 68, David. In 69, Rebecca. And last Christmas, with 10 children living, Mary lost a second infant. <laughs> I've been married for 15 years and have 10. I, I lost two, so I've been pregnant for 12 years of my married life. Uh, sometimes uh, people I know think that having a large family is a bit ridiculous. Some wouldn't agree with it, but I think that uh, it's all left out for you. I will admit sometimes when you do find out you're pregnant, maybe the first month of that, you do get an eye, but then it sort of grows and you get used to the idea, you don't mind. And that's the way it's been with me every year. I didn't mind, I just said, oh, well, another won't make much difference. Uh, and as well as that, I'm thankful to God that I'm healthy and the kids are all healthy. I've had no trouble. I wouldn't think having a large family is any trouble. I think it all depends on the mother, and I, I don't think it's any harm. Oh, I wouldn't mind having a bit another baby, but then again, it's nice to have a break at the same time. But if another one come along, well, it should be welcome like all the others. You know, not time during the year that you'd have a row, and he say to me, which of them would you give back? And there's an argument or anything, my husband. But I. Do you have to laugh when I heard that? I know it's just it's just calm. So I'd say to myself, I oh, will give back none of them. At the back of my mind, I'd be thinking, maybe I'm going to get a big break, and then all of a sudden I might break out again, start having another few. Because they told me in the, on the last baby that I could have at least another 10. Oh. Well, sometimes you do get upset, you know, you get annoyed sometimes if you go out, like, for clothes or that for the kids or shoes and you go out with so much in your pocket and you have to get so many pairs or whatever it is, you know, out of that. That's really the only thing, you know, that gets you down sometimes. Breakfast spills from the tiny kitchen into the living room. John and Mary have their own bedroom, the boys a second room, and the seven girls share the third bedroom in the terrace house which John and Mary rent from Dublin Corporation for two pounds and 70 pence a week. Oh, this system of uh, having your own front door, your own back door, and a bit of guard in front and garden in the back, you have that privacy. Flats are always reminding me of like pigeons, pigeon laughs. Like to just herd them into one little pigeon laugh and you're happy there. I work at shopping most of my life. Well, I'm basically a carpenter by trade. It's an interesting job, and like, there's just plenty of variety. You go from one shop to another, go from one part of the country to another also. Not that I like country work, I'd rather be in Dublin, but to get any decent overtime, you have to go on these country jobs. Well, the basic wage is roughly around £23 a week. We might get a few hours overtime, do two nights overtime a week, and brings a bit about an extra four or five pound. Right. You couldn't live really on a, on a flat week's wages. It's only, it's only in existence. So you have to do it a bit of overtime. And then again, it's not always you get the overtime. <laughs> 